Okay, so I'm going to the Sermon on the Mount, and that's Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, and this is in the middle of the last chapter, so it's right near the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and it's when Jesus tells us in Matthew, it's really verses 13 and 14, but the title comes from choosing the narrow gate. Sometimes we say the narrow road that leads to life, but it actually says the narrow gate that leads to life. So Lord, we ask you to help us, just like he had to make a choice when he was confronted in that situation about which way does he lean, and he didn't want to offend anyone, but he prayed and he listened to you, and you told him which gate to walk through. It wasn't the easy gate. It wasn't the wide gate and the wide road with lots of people on it. It was the narrow gate. And because of that, Lord, we are empowered and encouraged today. And, and we receive the impartation for courage because the narrow gate is always the more opposition and the more difficult one in the natural. But, but we're not going for what the world says. We want what you say, Lord. And we know that you care about every single decision that we make. We don't want to be legalists. We just want to have this open communication with you all day, every day, in every situation, to know which choice to take. Thousands of decisions that we make every day, thoughts that we have. Help us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but I find that to be a really challenging verse, to take every thought captive. <laughs> right? Like, I can't even remember. Sometimes I get up and go in the other room. I can't even remember what I went in the other room for. Does that ever happen to anybody? Am I the only one? And I'm like, what is wrong? And then I realize hitting myself on the head is not going to make that better. Right? <laughs> so we all have that issue of focus. And, and those thoughts can creep in. And look, I'm really not trying to make this legalistic and giving you things that you have to say every morning. I'm just trying to help you to stay in a place where your passion remains above neutral for the Lord, like, right? He doesn't want us to be lukewarm. You can't always be at a 10 on a scale of one to 10, I get it, but we don't have to get to zero or negative either. And, 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 and being around other Christians that are fired up for the Lord, that don't lean, but that take a stand really helps. I was, I think I mentioned I was reading a book while we were in Italy and, and the author, was, it was, the whole book was about the Holy Spirit. And it was like, if Paul came back, one of the things he would be most shocked about is uh, the lack of value we place on the community aspect of church. The idea that, yes, of course, it's, a, it's wonderful that we can look online, but we really need to be assembled together with other believers. Amen? So don't, don't neglect the value of the people that are all around you every time you come together. Not just this church, whatever church you're with. That's the body of Christ. If they're, if they're Bible-believing church and spirit-filled people, that's, that's the army of God. That's the remnant that, that we all need to be with. So choose the narrow gate that leads to life. Um, I'm, I'm putting the emphasis on choose because so much of life, I mean, right, even in the course of my day, I'll walk into the cleaners and the lady behind the counter, I say, happy Tuesday <laughs> or whatever day it is. You know, like nobody else is saying that to her. And she'll smile because like she's in the rut of this job and like, oh, here's the guy that's, that's happy. <laughs> it's a choice. Oh, it's only Tuesday, man. I can't wait to the hump day. Like, well, okay, if that's how you want to live, but I'd rather live with optimism than pessimism. If we have the Holy Spirit, man, we have joy, unspeakable. So this is the, the two verses, 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. All right, so this is, I would, I would open it up and say, beyond just salvation and walking through the gate of salvation and saying yes to Jesus, which I'm assuming most of all of you here have done, then it's a matter of how do I become his disciple? How do I keep making better and better choices? And like we do with children, you wouldn't try to teach calculus to most four-year-olds. Right? There's an expectation based on where they are in their maturing process. But by the same token, you would hope that somebody who's 21 years old knows how to give you change from the counter when you're in the store. Right? So there's different levels of expectation. And that's good. And, and God does that for all of us. And as a minister, you know, my wife and I now, um, I just celebrated 40 years of being saved. She's been saved longer than I have. It's easy to plateau. If you're not careful, now, I, that one, I don't believe that will ever happen for Tricia. 
because there's a fire inside of her that is like the Energizer Bunny. It never goes out. And, and that's wonderful to be with someone like that who's got, you know, the sole purpose is to please the Lord with everything that she does. And I knew it the first time I met her, but even before I met her, when I heard her speak, there was a spark in there. And we might not all have that, but we can all ask the Lord to help us get there because that's the best way to live your life. Not the little offhanded, well, you know, don't be legalistic about it. He's, he's, he, once you have your salvation, he can't take it away. He's not an Indian giver. A little sin here and there, what's the big deal? Thank you. That's leaning. I, can't, I didn't even know I was going to have that example to use, but I don't want to lean. I want to stand on the rock of my firm foundation. Winds came, storms blew, my house was built on you. Amen. Ooh, thank you, Lord. So I just keep bringing it to the front burner. You know, that's my example is when you're cooking on the stove, it's a front burner. And, and that's where the heat comes up. Like, I want to keep him at the front burner of my mind all day long because he's going to give me better answers than I would come up with myself. Unless the Lord builds a house to finish it. Just labor in vain. Anybody labored in vain? I'll wait. All of you have done something, and you know that you labored in vain. If I had just prayed about it first, mm -hmm. seek first man's logical answer. <laughs> no, everything you do, seek first the kingdom of God. And that was a proactive way that you can make choices, right? And that's part of that handout that I gave you that I'll get to in a minute. But I can make a decision in the morning when I get up that I know that my flesh is weak. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. That's right out of Scripture. So I can do some certain things in the morning, especially as I'm starting my day, to say, Lord, I want to take every thought captive today. I want to say, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All these things that we could just practice as good discipline compared to wake up in the morning and start scrolling Facebook. Step it on anybody's toes. <laughs> I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I'm just saying, like, we, we put up a video every day on Facebook, so I'm not against the platform, but we've got to be careful what's going in here. There's a gate, right? There's a gate on your eye. There's a gate on your ear. There's a gate on your heart, and, and we want it to be holy. We want it to line up with the Lord. Why? Because we flourish when we're obedient, and the enemy's a really good liar. He might be the forever loser, but he's really bitter and sarcastic and nasty and angry. And those are none of those are on the fruits of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit, excuse me. So the proactive thing could be, I'm going to pray every morning. When I get up, before I leave the house, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to say, let your kingdom come. Give me this day my daily bread. However you choose to do it. I don't like legalistic, repetitious things. So, because that could tend to be the same as if, imagine if we sang the same song every week. Eventually, your brain would just check out. It doesn't matter how good the song is because that's not what a relationship's about. Imagine if you walked in from, from work and you read a script to your spouse. How was your day, honey? Well, at 9 o'clock, I did this. At 10 o'clock, I did that. That's not a relationship. Well, not a healthy relationship anyway. So that's how God wants to be with us. And prayers are good. I'm not saying don't write things down. But just be careful it doesn't become a ritual that loses life. 